Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Learning Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use tools as dependencies. As usual, the link to this example will be in the description of this video, so please feel free to check it out, clone it, and play with it. I'm using the Todo Microservice example that I've been using in previous episodes, and the same applies for any other project that happens to be using this paradigm. The first thing I want to show you is that there is this tool called DearEnv, and DearEnv allows you to define uh, environment variables that are applied to your environment as soon as you change directory where the configuration of dear env is located at. I'll give you an example. So I have right here, I'm using my, my to the microservice and I have the configuration for this specific project. And I'm going to be saying, hey, uh, I'm going to be adding the bin, the folder bin to the path. So I can refer to the binaries that are uh, applicable to my project only. And I'm, I'm going I'm also specifying the go bin for this project to install all the binaries that I'm using. And I'm going to be showing you in a few minutes in the bin of this same project. The whole point of this is that I can, I can sandbox my binaries and my dependencies. I, I cannot, and I am allowed in a way to define different versions of the same tools for different projects that I'm using. So there is no uh, collision between the versions that I'm, that I'm using specifically. This is one way to do it. I like doing it specifically, and I really encourage you to use this tool for this specific example, but you don't have to. Now, I want to show you. So if I change directory to the to the path below, to the uh, subdirectory below, or the root below, the level below, whatever you want to call it, you will notice that it's actually unexporting the values that I exported previously. So if I do an echo go bin, you will notice that it's pointing to the... Um, uh, default value that I have right here, but if I go to my to microservice, it will go uh, inside the path that I define here. And the sa same applies when I'm using the go env environment uh, configuration tool, the command in the go, go tool chain. So the whole point, like I said, is referring or making sure that I'm not polluting the different directories, uh, different paths and different projects using different versions and therefore colliding with different projects. Anyways, let me show you how can we use this paradigm that is super cool, that allows you to specify concrete versions, concrete tools, and therefore add those to your dependencies. Now, the cool thing about this, if you remember when we were discussing Go modules, uh, the whole idea of defining a Go module is adding dependencies to your project. Now, I have a Go module already defined here for my project, which is under the Todo API. If I open what I like to do when defining a uh, dependencies for tools let me turn this off and when i'm using the this tools paradigm i like to define it to define a tools folder that happens to be including all the information that i need for the dependencies that i have in here i'm actually defining a new go module the biggest difference though is that i'm not referring to the packages that i'm using but rather the binaries that i want to use for the project that i'm currently working on. So in this example, I have the open API code generator, the software package metrics, the migrate tool, Golang CI, SQL C, and so on and so forth. Now, the cool thing about this, like I said, is that you can specify and you can define a tools dot go. You can name this file, whatever you want to. You just have to import the package that happens to be referring to the main package of the tool that you are using. Now, Obviously, you cannot import a main package, but what this does in Go is actually add the dependency into your Go mode, and it allows you to specify and use that package and that tool writer as part of your, of your tool chain. Now, if you notice when I was referring to the MVRC, uh, I added a path called bin into my binary. So when I install this, uh, what is going to happen? All right, let me show you first one thing. So I have in bin, I have this install tools script. It's just basically a shell script that happens to be installing all, all the binaries using go install. And if you notice, I'm not specifying the version right here. And that's intentional because I want go to take the value from go mod in this case and therefore pull the version right away and modify go mod on their internal tools and keep the version that I'm using. All of this is intentional. So I have this thing here. Let me undo all of this. And if I run install tools, remember, I had my path that happens to be pointing to the local bin in this folder because I'm using 
dear M, dear M. Therefore, I'm not going to be installed in the default path that I usually have for my user. So if I call install tools, it's going to be downloading the files, compiling those files, building the package, you know, building my main for each one of the packages and installing everything on their bin. So this is the cool thing about this paradigm. Now, <clears throat> as soon as we have this ready, we can actually uh, add another thing that I covered in previous episodes as well, related to maintainability. Uh, which will be in the depend about dependencies that I can add right here. So I can specify, hey, I also want to consider my Go mod that happens to be included in the internal tools folder that happens to be a Go module as well. So all of this is important to, to keep in mind when you're trying to do, use this paradigm and you want to keep track of your dependencies. Now, what if we want to add a new dependency? Let's look at that example. So let's say we want to add a new tool. In this case, let's take as an example, the stringer command. We do the usual go get. Now go get will modify our local go mod and go sum to include those dependencies. As usual, when you pull files or packages using get. Now the important thing that is going to happen is that in order to make this package or rather tool stick into our dependencies, we need to modify our tools dot go file to make sure that we are always included what the heck that uh, we are always including it in our dependencies so i go and import the main package for this tool again this is not going to compile and i will show you in a moment but the whole idea and the, the, the way it works with go is that you are referring to that binary to that package that happens to be using the main package we are going to be adding it to our our go mod and then it will be part of our dependencies. So if I do a go mod, let me show you again. We have two modifications, three modifications now. So we have the tools, the sys and net and so on and so forth. They're, they were upgraded because they were used by the stringer uh, command. And we have it down here referring to the stringer tool. If I do a go mod tidy, what is going to happen is that now this dependency is no longer an indirect dependency it is a direct dependency because i include that in the tools.co file so i'm explicitly importing it now does this compile well no it doesn't compile because the, what i was saying is a program is importing the main package and it doesn't compile but that's not the point of what we're doing here what we're doing here is we're trying to add the dependency to our projects so we can use it we can tag it and we can version it and it could be part of our pipeline now what is next and we have to do is need to jump into the binary all right the bin folder and specifically the install tools shell script so we just have to copy oops not that but rather what I was using a while ago for installing, which, where are you? Go okay, get, there you go. So I just need to copy this, install it in my bin install tools, add it as part of the instructions, just run it. And what is going to happen here, if I run ls bin, let's run, let's remove a stringer just so, so you know that I'm not cheating. If I run install tools, oops, that is a typo. And if I run install tools, it now a stringer will be back. And he's referring to the dependencies that I have. So what is left is just basically just committing all these changes into, to, into your repository. And like I mentioned before, with the pendabot, we can actually refer to that uh, go mod and also those packages will be upgraded as soon as we need them or rather as soon as there are new versions obviously so let's jump into the conclusions and then we'll talk to you in a few seconds so this is how you add tools as dependencies in go the paradigm is pretty straightforward and it's really useful when you depend on tools written in go as well you can add, the, add them as part of your repository if you even if you want to you can even add them as a vendor package as well but that's a different story the point the whole point of this is that you can you can version just package your packages that you use obviously and also the tools so you always have a way to build whatever the artifacts that you're building the same way all the single time and with that thank you for watching and any comments any any questions just let me know in the 
comments section below and i will talk to you next time take care and stay safe see you